It's a great transition. We're uh, going into the last, finishing the last chapter of the book of Revelation today. The last of the last, the end of the end. Ah, yes, just so you know, there is a Passover organizational meeting right after this. And I think that there's a little birthday party just possibly after this as well for a, a young man. I don't know, he's getting bigger. So, before I go into Revelation, um, as, as most of you know, we're very connected with Celebrate Messiah and uh, IAMCS, so Chosen People Ministries International, with, with congregations that are throughout uh, Europe and Russia, or Ukraine and Russia, I'll just point it out in particular. And so we have friends that are literally from both places, right? And ministers that are ministering in both areas. Uh, I know that uh, Celebrate Messiah works with uh, like three possibly, three, three congregations up in the Far East Russia. And uh, I got to meet uh, Vladimir Pickman, who's from Kiev. And, uh, and you know, so this, this, what's going on with this battle and this war in the Ukraine is heartbreaking, right? Because we know that it's, uh, it is, I say the innocent people, it is the, it is the civilians that will pay the, pay the cost. Now I wanted to read to you uh, one of the prayers from one of the pastors in, in the Ukraine. And he says this, Shalom colleagues, I send this out, I send, sent out our, um, sent out to our email list today and I thought it might be helpful to you, especially the prayer points at the end. This morning I awoke to a tragic, uh, a tragic heartbreaking news at 5 a.m. Ukrainian time, Russian President Vladimir Putin declared a special military occupies, o, uh, sorry, special military operation to denazify and demilitarize Ukraine. This de deceptive doublespeak means that he has chosen to begin a war with Ukraine with the goals of overthrowing the democ democratically elected government. Within minutes, missiles, missile strikes could be heard across the country and tanks rolled across Ukraine's border from Russia and Belarus. Now, I spoke with our leader, leadership team in Belarus this morning, and they are shocked and dismayed that Ukraine was attacked. They are also deeply saddened that Ukraine was attacked from Belarusian soil, as well as from the east and the south. Some villages in Belarus on the border of Ukraine have been evacu evacuated because Russia is firing at Ukraine from those villages. Innocent men, women, and children are suffering, and it looks as though things will only get worse before they get better. We have been informed that many families in Ukraine are seeking refuge in smaller villages because it appears that the Russian forces are focusing on the bigger cities and the military infrastructure of Ukraine. Also, many from the east of Ukraine, cities like Kharkiv, are fleeing and seeking safety in Poland and other countries. Chantelle and I are praying for the Ukrainian people and all of our friends and ministry contacts in Ukraine, and of course in Belarus, where we lived for 12 years and continue to serve. Please continue in prayer, number one, for our brothers and sisters in Messiah who are being affected by the crisis. May they be protected and may they be able to be a light and an encouragement at this time. Two, for the people of Ukraine who face a bloody invasion and an occupation of their country, and for wisdom for their president, Volodymyr, Volodymyr Zelensky, who himself is Jewish. Number three, for the Jewish population of Ukraine, many elderly Holocaust survivors still live in Ukraine, and there is a thriving uh, Jewish community there. And I remember reading from uh, another newspaper, they, they estimated around 75,000, give or take. Among the evil, devilish motiv motivations, so sorry, we're going to pray against the evil, devilish motivations of greed and pride that seem to be motivating Putin to seek war. May he repent of his actions, which have the potential to cause untold suffering to millions and potentially cause tens of thousands of deaths. For an immediate end to this Russian invasion of Ukraine for wisdom and courage for the Western and other world leaders to stand against this Russian aggression. 
And finally, for many to repent of their sins, turn to the Lord and find mercy and eternal salvation. In Yeshua's service, Stuart Winograd. And I know that there's, there's a lot going on and you listen to the media, you'll get three sides of the same story that none of them match and all those sorts of things. But we do know that many people are dying in this war. And we are praying, we are praying that, that people would turn back to the Lord. Uh, I did, you know, I, I, I myself did a tiny bit of study on, you know, who is this Volodymyr Zelensky guy? And, you know, I've not really heard of him before. And so he was elected two years ago by a 75% majority. 75%. Do you know why? He had never been in politics before. He was an actor. He actually played the role of a president on a TV show. I guess he thought he could do it for real. And the funny thing is, is that he's done a better job than all the previous ones combined. And this is what's crazy. The reason why he was voted is because of there is so much corruption going on in the Ukrainian government. That's why he was elected, to try and clean it up. Sounds very similar to Donald Trump. You know, he's, of course, not liked by a lot of the people who have a lot of money because the people who are being corrupt are oftentimes those who want to keep themselves in power. We also know that Ukraine is, has a history of not being innocent. We're very well aware of that. And so we are not asking God for, for um, you know, for justice. No, we're praying for mercy. We're praying for mercy. And uh, in wrath, remember mercy. And let's not forget the Russian people as well. The, the government of Putin is no, and Putin is no, no angel, no saint. He's already restricting uh, house gatherings and churches and Bible studies. And while he says things publicly in, in favor of the Russian Orthodox Church, he, he's trying to stamp out all the other churches at the same time. And so in this battle, there's no good guys and no bad guys. All right? In, in essence, we're all sinners. And war is simply the result of sin. Because the wages of sin is death. And so what we're seeing is, a, is so many sins compounded together, ending in war. War is also used by God as a judgment. Let's not forget that. But as we're praying, pray that people would turn to God in repentance. Pray that people would call on the Lord for his salvation. Pray for the brothers and sisters in Messiah, our brothers and sisters who live in these nations, who are reaching uh, Jew and Gentile alike throughout that nation. Pray that God would intervene. Father, we just, as we open the book of Revelation for this last time today, Father, we, we remember Ukraine. We remember all the things that you spoke in the book of Revelation about wars and rumors of wars, about devastation, destruction, and these things in your word were initiated by you. Lord, you raise nations up and you bring nations down. And Father, we would be foolish to think that we are safe here in Australia from your judgment. No, on the contrary, we have thumbed our nose at you. We have deliberately walked away from you. We have been proud when we should have been humble. Lord, we have, we have flaunted our sin when we should have humbly repented of our sin. And so, Father, we come to you, and Lord, we ask for mercy for Ukraine. We ask for mercy for Australia. In Yeshua's precious name, amen. Revelation chapter 22. Last week, we talked about the new heaven and the new earth, the new Jerusalem that came down. And today, we will be looking at the closing remarks of the angel that was speaking to John. The closing remarks of Yeshua, and then the closing remarks of John himself. Let's just go ahead and read the whole passage. 
starting at verse 6. Then he, the angel, said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. Adonai, the God of the spirits of the prophets, has sent his angel to show his servants what must happen soon. Behold, I am coming soon. How fortunate is the one who keeps the word of the prophecy of this book. I, John, am the one hearing and seeing these things. And when I heard, I saw, heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel showing me these things. But he tells me, see that you do not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers, the prophets, and those keeping the words of this book. Worship God. Then he tells me, do not seal up the words of this prophecy of this book, for the time is near. Let the evildoer still do evil, and the filthy still be filthy, and the righteous still do righteousness, and the holy still be holy. Behold, I am coming soon, and my reward is with me, to pay back to each one according to his deeds. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. How fortunate are the, those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter through the gate into the city. Outside are the dogs, and the sorcerers, and the sexually immoral, and the murderers, and the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Yeshua, have sent my angel to testify these things to you for my communities. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. The Ruach and the bride say, come. Let the one who hears say, come. Let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who wishes freely take the water of life. I testify to everyone who hears the words of this prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of this book of this prophecy, God shall take away his share in the tree of life and the holy city which are written in this book. The one giving testimony to these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Yeshua. May the grace of the Lord Yeshua be with you all. Amen. Amen. So we start with the words of the angel. This last chapter is really a summary of the first chapter. Uh, it's just, it makes sense, you know, the first and last chapter, the bookends of the, of the entire book. Uh, it also seems to be the summary not only of Revelation, but also of the entire scriptures. Uh, we certainly, it was certainly probably the last one written, the last uh, of all the documents to be written, and it was actually the last one to be accepted into the canon. We begin with the angel, the angel that has been showing John all of these things from the beginning. In verse 1 of chapter 1, it says, these words are trustworthy and true. This is, the, you know, the angel saying, what you have heard and seen, this is trustworthy and true. That, that formulation, that, that the, these words are trustworthy and true, is very similar to our statutory declaration that we have in this country, a stat deck. It is a legal statement that guarantees that what has been said is true, verifiably true. John started out in Revelation, in verse 2, chapter 1, verse 2, and we can, we can turn over there just real quick. Chapter 1, verse 2, John started out by saying that he was sent by his angel to his servant John, who testified to the word of God and to the testimony of Yeshua, the Messiah. John started out by telling us that he is testifying of these things. He is making a, a statement, a legal statement, verifying that this is true. And Yeshua revealed himself to one of the congregations, happens to be the congregation in Laodicea, as the faithful and true witness. The faithful and true witness, the originator of all creation. 
Now, we have just witnessed the, the creation of the new heavens and the new earth. We went over that last week and the week before. And we see that Yeshua, Yeshua starts out by saying, He is the creator of all that exists now. And he ends the book by saying, He is the creator of all that is to come. The angel then goes back and reminds John that God is the ruler over the spirit of the prophets. You know, God, who is the ruler over the spirits of the prophets. And this is actually a reference back to Amos chapter 3, verse 7. In that verse, uh, Amos declares, For the Lord Adonai will do nothing unless he has revealed his counsel to his servants, the prophets. Now concerning this verse, I have a little quote. It is not that Adonai cannot act without the help of the prophets, or that he is obliged to share his knowledge with them. Rather, consistent with other prophetical and historical emphases on Adonai's servants, the prophets, this verse in Amos states simply that the prophets carry a message not their own. Adonai does explain his own actions, and he does use the prophets as his spokespersons, but he is hardly dependent on them. The message of this angel who is speaking to John, and this is what the angel is saying, it carries the authority of the one who has sent him. It carries the authority of Yeshua, the Messiah. We read that in the first chapter. You know, this is the re revelation of Yeshua, the Messiah, which God gave him to show his servants the things that would soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant, John. And here is this angel. Come in the authority of Yeshua, the Messiah. Coming and verifying and testifying that these things are true. Now, John's first response in verse 8 of Revelation 22, his first and initial response was to fall down and worship this glorious being. But the angel reacted to him by telling him, don't do that. Worship God. Worship God alone. This is a good lesson for all of us. The presence of angels can be very overwhelming, but we are never to worship them. Worship is reserved for Adonai alone. In Isaiah 48, 11, the second half of the verse, we see that Adonai declares to the prophet, I will not give my glory to another. What is amazing is the rest of this chapter in Isaiah 48, which we will cover in just a minute. But before we go there, the angel tells John to keep the prophecy of Revelation unsealed. Now, this is exactly the opposite. If you remember back to uh, Daniel, it's exactly the opposite of what Daniel was told. Daniel was told to seal the prophecy, that it was for the time of the end, and that it was a time many years in the future. We know Daniel, Daniel prophesied when Messiah would come, but that was 500, almost 500 years later that Yeshua would come. And the prophecies of Daniel with regards to the end times we have watched them even now still being fulfilled. And so he was seeing things far into the future. And he was told to seal that prophecy, but John is told the exact opposite. He's told to leave it unsealed. Leave it unsealed because it is for now. Especially if you go through uh, Revelation 12, if you remember Revelation 12, with regards to... Um, it has the dragon and the mother and the child. We see that was talking about current events in John's day. There were parts of this that were already starting, parts of this prophecy that were already in motion. And so therefore he is told to leave the prophecy unsealed. But we are also warned. We are warned by the angel that there is a point of no return. The angel says, let the evildoer still do evil, and let the filthy still be filthy. Let the righteous still do righteousness, and let the holy still be holy. This is a sense of things being set in motion. 
saying that time is so short that if you're going to be evil, go ahead and just be evil. You'll be part of God's plan. If you're going to be filthy, don't worry. You can keep on being filthy. You'll still be a part of God's plan. You'll just be part of the judgment side. And if you're going to be righteous, then still do righteousness. And if you're going to be holy, be holy. Then you have a much glorious part in God's plan. A part of forgiveness and grace. A part of, of glorious, a glorious eternity. Now in verse, 20, in verse 12, in verse 12, it seems that we change uh, spokespeople. We go from the angel to what seems to be Yeshua. He says, behold, I am coming soon, and my reward is with me to pay back everyone according to his deeds. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. How fortunate are those who wash their robes that they may have the right to the tree of life. So we turn from the words of the angel to Yeshua. Yeshua declares himself to be the first letter and the last letter. The Aleph and the Tav in the Hebrew. In the Greek, it's the Alpha and the Omega. We could say the A to Z in English. It's the same sort of concept. The first and the last, the beginning and the end. <clears throat> this actually takes us back to Isaiah 48. I'm going to turn there now. Isaiah 48. We'll read the verse that I, I mentioned or quoted earlier. But we'll continue to read on. I'm going to start at verse, verse 10. Behold, I have refined you, though not as much as silver. I tested you in the furnace of affliction. For my own sake, for my own sake, I act. For how should I be profaned? I will not give my glory to another. Listen to me, Jacob, Israel, whom I called. I am he. I am the first. I am also the last. Surely my hand founded the earth. My right hand spread out the heavens. When I call to them, they stand together. Assemble all of you and listen. Who among them foretold these things? Adonai loves him. He will do his will against Babylon and his arm against the Chaldeans. I have spoken, yes, I have I called him. I will bring him so that his ways will succeed. I'm just going to pause there at verse 15. When we look at the attributes, the one speaking to Isaiah, firstly, he acknowledges the one who's speaking, says, This is the one who called Israel. That's a reference actually back to Genesis chapter 32, verse 25. This one speaking in Isaiah 48 says he's the one that called Israel. Genesis 32, starting at verse 25. So Jacob remained all by himself, then a man wrestled with him until the break of dawn. And he, when he saw that he had not overcome him, he struck the socket of his hip. So he dislocated the socket of Jacob's hip when he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go for the dawn has broken. But he says, I won't let you go unless you bless me. Then he said to him, what is your name? Jacob, he said. Then he said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but rather Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and you have overcome. Then Jacob asked and said, please tell me your name. He said, what's this? You are asking my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob named the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life has been spared. This was the time when Jacob was called. And the one speaking to Isaiah in 48 says that he's the one who called Israel. He's the one who called Israel. Next, the one, the one that's speaking in Isaiah 48 declares that he is the first and the last. And as the first, this one declares that his hand founded the earth and his hand spread out the heavens. This is the creator of all things. And through his word, the heavens and earth stand together. Stand together. 
He calls them and they stand together. Now, earlier in the chapter, uh, back in verse 5, we actually read that it says, the speaker says, I foretold it to you long ago. Before it came about, I made you hear, lest you should say, my idol did them, or my carved image, yes, my molded image commanded them. You see, this argument continues. It's this argument between the one speaking and all these other foreign deities. And in verse 14, he mockingly asks, it says, Who among them, speaking of all these false deities, who among them foretold these things? Who among them could prophesy? Which stone idol can prophesy and say something? Which idol can predict the future? This argument continues, but what's interesting, it says right here in, in the middle of verse 14, with regards to the one who is speaking, it says, Adonai loves him. That's really strange. It almost feels out of place. He's, assemble all of you and listen. Who among you foretold these things? Adonai loves him. And then it goes on and says, he will do his will against Babylon, his arm against the Chaldeans. You're like, that, that just doesn't seem to quite fit. Adonai loves him. But this one, this one that's speaking, will accomplish his will against Babylon, against the Chaldeans. Now, we have spent the last several chapters in Revelation discussing the ultimate destruction of the final Babylon, the ultimate Babylon, the ultimate city of the world empire. And who is the one who brings about that destruction, who accomplishes it? Now I'm going to go on at verse 16. Verse 16 is one of the most powerful arguments for the compound unity of Adonai. Draw near to me, hear this. Since the beginning, I have not spoken in secret. From the time it existed, I was there. So Adonai Elohim has sent me and his Ruach. Oh, oh, wait a second. Who's speaking the rest of this chapter then? Who's speaking the rest of this chapter? Who's the one who called Israel? Because if you read other places, you're like, well, this is Adonai. This is the Lord speaking to the prophet. Well, it's not the prophet speaking. Who is this that it says, so now Adonai has sent me and his Ruach? The one speaking claims to exist from the beginning. He claims that Adonai Elohim has sent him. He claims that Adonai Elohim has sent his Ruach, his spirit. It reminds me of John 1, 1 through 5. In the beginning was the word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were made through Him. And apart from Him, there was nothing made that was made. In Him was life, and the light was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overpowered it. Who is this one? <laughs> Amen. Yeshua, our Messiah. So coming back to Revelation 22, now we see Yeshua's blessing and a curse. He gives a blessing and a curse. A curse that's a warning, a blessing that's an encouragement. So first of all, this, this passage right here reads almost like the Ten Words, the Ten Commandments given on Mount Sinai. He starts by saying the blessing. He says, blessed are those, how fortunate are those who wash their robes that they may have the right to the tree of life, so that they may enter through the gates into the city. This is the blessing for the righteous, that our names are written in the Lamb's book of life, that eternal life is the promise by Yeshua. 
Blessed are those who wash their robes that they may have the right to the tree of life. A, a clean robes, as we were told in other places in Revelation, they, these are the righteous deeds of the saints. The righteous actions that we do that bring glory to God. The things that have eternal value that we can do today that will put a smile on God's face. But then Yeshua goes on. After, after speaking this way and speaking of this restoration, like a restoration to the Garden of Eden, Yeshua goes on. He lists very similar words, like I said, to this Mount Sinai. He says, outside are the dogs and the sorcerers. Dogs is actually a derogative term for the wicked, but specifically for male and female cult prostitutes. Sorcerers. You know, just back to the, you know, the prostitution, Deuteronomy 23, verse 17 and 8 through 18, explicitly commands against that. Sorcerers are those who practice witchcraft. Deuteronomy 18, 10 through 11. Sexually immoral. That's from the Greek word pornos. A word that refers to all sexual behavior outside of the marriage of one man to one woman. This is the question that Yeshua answers in Matthew 19, verses 1 through 12. What is the correct relationship? For sex, for sex to occur. Then murderers, Yeshua lists murderers, thou shalt not kill. Idolaters shall not have any graven image, shall not bow down to them. Those who love and practice falsehood. This is exactly opposite to the keeping of the faith. We keep the trust. We, the, when you say the keeping of the faith, we're saying we are being trustworthy. We are being faithful to the one who has called us. John will write about this in 1 John later on in his life. Now it says that none of these people will enter the kingdom of God. And in all of these cases, the reference is to those who continue in that sin. And from all of these sinful life and lifestyles, the Lord can give forgiveness. He can restore us, but we must not continue in those sinful lifestyles. Certainly, all of us have something that we have repented of. A lifestyle, a past, a sinful something. And if God is able to extend, if Yeshua is able to extend forgiveness to the thief on the cross next to him, then he is certainly able to provide forgiveness for all of us. But we must not continue in those lifestyles. Yeshua then closes this statement with a list of his own credentials. He says he is the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. This is a reference back to Isaiah 11. Isaiah 11, the first five verses. where it says this, Then a shoot will come forth out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch will bear fruit out of his roots. The Ruach of Adonai will rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and insight, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight will be in the fear of Adonai. He will not judge by what his eyes see, nor decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he will judge the poor and decide with fairness for the poor of the land. He will strike the land with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Also righteousness will be in the belt around his loins, and faithfulness the belt around his waist. This is the Messiah. The Messiah, the King of Israel, will not judge by what his eyes see. A lot of people get really concerned when they hear that God is going to judge. 
But I can assure you, God will judge us not only by our actions, and yes, he knows them all, not only by our thoughts, our words, I should say, but also by our thoughts. He knows the intentions of our hearts. Yeshua knew what the Pharisees were thinking and addressed that. The problem, of course, is that doesn't give me any sense of comfort. If I was to be judged by the thoughts and the intentions of my heart, as well as being judged by my words and my actions, I am guilty. In fact, I think not one of us would really want all of our thoughts pasted up on a big screen television. I think we're all in a situation where we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We desperately need forgiveness. We need for our sin debt to be paid. And that is what Yeshua has done. John then responds right at the end of this book. He throws his own two cents in and he, he, uh, he responds to Yeshua's words with his own call and his own warning. And the call seems to erupt from his heart. He says, the Ruach and the Bride. John is including himself in that as the Bride of Messiah. The Ruach and the Bride say, come. Let the one who hears say, come. Let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who wishes Freely take of the water of life. John says, I testify to everyone who hears these words of the prophecy of this book. That's recounting verse 2 of chapter 1. But this whole passage really reminds me, when I look at uh, how to apply this, I look at how to apply this. This reminds me of the blessings and the curses that the Lord set before the children of Israel. Uh, Deuteronomy 11, verse 26. We see, see, I am setting before you today a blessing and a curse. If you listen to the mitzvot of Adonai, your God, that I am commanding you today, there's a blessing. But the curse... If you do not listen to the mitzvot of Adonai, your God, but turn away from the way that I am commanding you today to go after other gods that you have not known. That's Deuteronomy 11. Then later on in Deuteronomy 30, he says this, I call heaven and earth as witnesses about you today that I have set before you life and death, a blessing and a curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your descendants may live. By loving Adonai your God, listening to his voice and clinging to him. For he is your life and the length of your days. That you may dwell on the land that Adonai swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. This was the covenant that the Lord made with Israel. And this is the call that is set before all of us today. It's the same call that we're given in the new covenant. To choose life. Choose the way of Adonai. Choose to follow him. I want to finally close by some words of C.S. Lewis uh, from the uh, Voyage of the Dawn Treader. Yes, it's a good, good book to quote. Uh, for those of you who don't know the Voyage of the Dawn, how many do not know of the Voyage of the Dawn Treader? Has everybody heard? Okay, so C.S. Lewis wrote the Chronicles of Narnia. Heard of the Chronicles of Narnia? Okay, so the fourth rendition, third rendition, third. Third book, I think, in that series is third or fourth, depending on how you order. Yes, third or fourth book is The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. It's this trip on the sea in the Dawn Treader, okay, which is the ship. And on one of the islands, they stop, and Aslan who is a picture of Yeshua, meets up with Lucy in, uh, in a star's home. And Aslan says, do not look sad. We shall meet soon again. Please, Aslan, said Lucy, what do you call soon? I call all times soon, said Aslan. And instantly, he was vanished away. So when is Yeshua coming? Yeshua is coming soon. Amen.
Abba, Father, we thank you that you are coming soon. And one thing is for certain, we are a lot sooner now, today, than John was when he wrote it then. Lord, you are coming soon. And you have set before us a blessing and a curse, life and death. And you give us the opportunity to choose. And Lord, we hear, we choose life. I choose life. We at this congregation choose life. We choose to grab a hold of you in Yeshua's precious name. Amen. 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 All right. Yes, Andre. I, I, let it, I want to open it up for some questions. For those of you who knew, I like to open it up for questions. Ah, yes, with regard, I thank you so much for reminding me. So with regards to the, if you're wanting to give to, uh, to, to Ukraine and you're feeling uh, an urge to do so, my recommendation is to go through uh, the organization that we're a part of. Uh, so we're, part, we're under celeb, uh, celebrate, it, um, celebrate Messiah, which is a part of Chosen People Ministries International. So they have congregations over in Ukraine so I recommend you go on to chosenpeople.com, chosenpeople.com, and they have a, they've set up a Ukraine relief fund. And that way the money will go straight into the hands of the pastors and ministers of the local congregations who are there, who are already ministering to people. And they have a bunch of photos up there already of the support they've been able to provide. And so you can actually go and see uh, what they're doing. So chosenpeople.com and, um, Oh, that's a great idea. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, um, I'll just leave this up at the front. And if anybody wants to give um, to, to Ukraine, everything that's left in here um, will, be, will be given to... What? No, 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 no. The Lord has provided me bountifully my own groceries. So, no, no. If you want to give to Ukraine, uh, we, everything that's given today in this will absolutely earmark that directly to uh, to the believers in Ukraine and the congregations in Ukraine. Yes. I can do it again next week too. And like I said, if you can do it uh, online, you can do it online with a credit card. I'm not sure if it's set up with BSB yet. So uh, yes, I will definitely take an offering up next week as well. All right. And any other questions about Revelation? There's one right over here, Elizabeth. Anne's got, got her hand up still. Was there somebody else as well? Sorry, Rob, this is not about Revelation. Oh, it's not about Revelation? Uh, if we're praying for the people of the Ukraine, we need to pray for the Russians as well. Absolutely. Because there are people heading for jail and all the rest of it because they dare to say, no, this is wrong. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. And like I said, um, Celebrate Messiah has um, three or four congregations that we are partnered with in Far East Russia. So yes, mm -hmm. I pray for the people of Russia. Pray uh, for, for God to uh, give them freedom as well. There was a group of men who, men and women who worked for one of the television stations and they were told what to, to send out. Sure. And they said no. And they put on Tchaikovsky's Swan Lake and walked out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, there's no doubt that Putin is not necessarily, he's a bully and not necessarily a nice guy. Yeah, you know, he kills his political opponents with poison in other countries, so. <laughs> he's, not a, he's not a nice guy. So I, I have a concern for the uh, Ukraine people. Unless they get their crops sown in the next six weeks, maybe two months at the extreme, they will not have enough food to get through the next 12 months. Yeah. Um, you know, just being a farmer, that, that, there's a hard facts. So yeah. um, this donation, there could be food shortages coming up. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's the famine due to war, right? I mean, this is absolutely true because the crops won't be sown. Not only for Ukraine, but for anybody who's actually relying on those crops as well. Yeah. Not just for Ukraine. 
That's right. All right, anything else? Yes? Oh, can I just give a brief um, testimony? Sure. Do I need the microphone? Yeah, because there's people online who oh, can't hi hear you. Oh, hi guys, online. Welcome today. We've got a motto at uh, the home group that meets at June's place. You remember what it is, June? What's I'm not motto? leaving the same as I came in Jesus' name. <laughs> so there's a couple of people here, and like the test, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. And if you will indulge me for a moment, I'd just like to say. That you want to come up? No. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Stay there. <laughs> So there's a couple of people here. I just want to say my testimony is this. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. And I want to tell the people here today that absolutely nothing is impossible for Jesus. He is the master of the breakthrough. Yes, I can see you looking at me, Paul. He's the master of the breakthrough. And I'm hoping for a breakthrough in your family life, mate, in Jesus' name. But you know, the word of God doesn't just come in word alone. It comes in life-changing power. And I'm reminded every time I look in the mirror in my short and evil life how much Jesus has changed me from death and destruction to life and hope and prosperity and good stuff. And I actually have the guarantee in my life today. If you want, there's a couple of people here today who really need to hear this. I, I really believe this, that God has saved me from death and destruction and given me eternal life. And I actually have that guarantee. And there's a few people here who really need to know that. And, and I just want to say to the, you, I'm going to point someone out in a minute. I just want to say that we're a family here. And uh, you know, this is a sanctuary. And, and it's basically you're in your father's house right now. And you can put your feet up. You can yawn. You can scratch. You can kick back. Because God knows everything about you and he loves you. But there's a couple of people here who really need to understand how God can take, give you a new heart and a new spirit and take away that uh, heart of, take away that stony heart from your heart of flesh. And he's going to put his spirit in you and you'll be able to walk in his laws and statutes and dwell in the land that he gave to the fathers. What does that mean? You have an inheritance. You know that I'm talking to you. You have an inheritance in God. It's not just in the sweet by and by, but here and now. So I just want to say to those of you who are listening to me, the next miracle is as close as you believing in your heart. Jesus is coming soon. And I just wanted to speak a word about, you know, like forgiveness and healing. And particularly, I was thinking of Paul. So glad to know you, mate. But I just want to pray for Angela and Matt right now. And Matt, if I'm, may I just speak? Look at me. Can I just speak a word over it? I really want to say to, this to you, mate. There's a scripture in Isaiah 43. I'm not doing this to embarrass you, because you might slip away. And I'll be kicking myself. Yeah, you hypocrite. You should have said something to that bloke. And I, there's Isaiah 43, about verses 8 and 19, say, do not... Remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Shall you not be aware of it? I am going to make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So right now, I want you to, I just want to pray for you. I really feel there's going to be, like I don't like, I don't want to do this, but I will. I just want to pray right now, Lord, for for Matt and Angela right now, in the name of Jesus. Can you just hold your wife's hand, mate? And I just want to pray for healing and restoration. <laughs> just put your hands towards this beautiful couple. Thank you, Jesus, that you are making things new in Matt and Angela's life. And I just thank you for your wonder and your miracle work and power. And I just pray, Lord, for uh, for forgiveness and restoration in this marriage. I pray for new joy and new peace. And I just thank you, Lord, that your words encourages husbands to love their wives and wives, therefore, be able to submit to that love. But, Matt, I just pray that you today, that that, uh, that God will take away that the stoniness in that heart of yours and give you a new heart and then and enable you to walk in his statutes. How do you do that? If you don't know, the, ne the next miracle I was talking about is as close as believing in your heart 
and saying yes to Jesus. It hasn't changed from the olden days to now. You just say, God, I need help. I know from my own life, I didn't have an experience in church, but I had an encounter with God, and I just all I could do was just cry out, Jesus, Jesus, save me. Let me know that you're real. And that's for all of us here today. We really need to get right and say, come on, God, let's, let's walk in the spirit and let's have the words. Because if anyone is in Christ, and this is not just to you, Matt, this is to everyone. If anyone is in Christ, all things are made new. And the old passes away. Hallelujah. The old passes away. You become a new creation. And we turn, when you repent, you turn around, you leave the old life behind and you start walking in the, in the new life. So there's a couple of other people here today who really need to understand that. So it's, the next miracle for you is saying yes to Jesus. Believe in your heart. Speak it out with your mouth. And you will be born again and become a new crea creation in God. Amen. Yes, Jesus is coming back. Hallelujah. Amen. But I, I just want to, I know Jan's on the prayer team. Yep. And, and so am I. And it will like, we'll be available yep, to, you'll to be a, discuss yeah, the and we'll come pray up. for you uh, uh, more Absolutely. privately than now. <laughs> and if anyone's got, really feels the need for physical or emotional healing, I know that God is more than able. He rose again from the dead triumphantly Amen. over sin and death and is here right now. The presence of the Lord is here to bring healing. So let's, I, I know Jan and I will be available. Yep, if everybody will stand up, we're going to go ahead and um, close with the Aharonic benediction. Uh, and then uh, we'll have the prayer team over here to, to my left, your right. Uh, and with regards to uh, this, there's uh, Saul's birthdays parties out there afterwards, as well as um, uh, I believe there's a, a Passover meeting as well in the in the room in the back. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Well, what we can do is pretty simple. We just um, in prayer prayer can be just in the the kids' room over there if that works one with the windows all right the Lord gave this blessing to give to Aaron to give to the people Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. In the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you all. There's tea and coffee out here to the right uh, through those doors. And I believe that's where there's going to be a little birthday party for Saul as well. If you brought your lunch, you can go out there. For those who want prayer, we'll go over into the... Uh, the little Sunday school room over here. And then um, we'll see you guys later.